Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at some of the editing that you can do with audio. So in the previous video you saw how to use the loop browser so under media you can go to loop browser and you can import parts and add them to your arrangement or in this case to make things a little clearer I've just created a quick new arrangement from three included loops so I've got this disco clav loop Uh, got a very simple sort of electro style drum loop and then I've got a bass synth loop okay and they, they kind of work together for a while so you can see this one says A minor and this one says A minor so you think yeah everything's fine it's all good so I keep playing until bar three when uh, things don't go to plan So what's happening here is the chord is changing here, it's moving down, and this isn't changing, this is staying the same. So we're going to use this sort of as a vehicle of how you can, can change the, the pitch of audio using the tools that are available to you. So if you click on an audio event, so this is important, it's not when you click on the track, it's when you actually click on an individual event. The information line here, which if it's not visible, you can click with the little box with the cog the here, and then make sure info line is turned on, but it is turned on by default. So when you click on this, it shows you information about it, like the file name and when it starts and finishes. But most importantly for us today, we've got transpose and fine tune. So here you can change the pitch. So this is in semitones. Uh, this is in hundredths of a semitone. So you can fine tune things. Often you'll find things will be a bit out of tune. You can use this to, to get them so things fit together. And here we can change the pitch, uh, a semitone, so a key on the keyboard. So if you were using your uh, on-screen keyboard, this would be the difference between, if you put it up by one, it would be the difference between Q, which is a C, and the two on the keyboard, which is a C sharp. So if, if this is a bit of a mystery to you, I would suggest you just noodle around with it because often people actually know music theory in their head. They know when things sound right or not but they may not have the, the traditional names for them. So play around with it and make, go with what you think sounds right. Sometimes it will be right, sometimes it, it won't. But as you go along and learn, it all gets simpler. But I've known people who've got an incredible inner ear and they understand everything, but they, they don't know any of the traditional names for it. So just because you don't know what a, an F-sharp mixolydian scale is doesn't necessarily mean you don't actually know what it is. You just might not know the name for it. Anyway... What we're going to do here is we're going to use the scissors, so new tool. So we're going to make sure that snap is turned on. So here, snap, this button is turned on, and we're set to grid, and we're set to bar. So we're only going to cut a bar increments, which is fine for the time being. I'm going to double-click or right-click and get the scissors. Or you can go up here. You can use either. It's exactly the same tool. And then I'm going to cut this at the beginning of bar 3 and then at the end of bar 3 because bar 3 is the offensive bar. So I'm going to click on that there. And now I'm going to change the pitch of it. So I think it's down. I'm going to try minus two and see if that works. Again, play from the beginning. I'm going to mute the drums to make it a little clearer. So now to there, that's okay. There's a little click in there. We'll worry about that later on. Um, now let's see what else is happening. So that's too high. I don't like that. I'm going to move that down. I'm not sure how many by, but let's try two. Start from here. No, that's even worse. So maybe down another one. It's still too high. There we go. Now, I like these, even though these aren't the note I would have originally put in there, but I just want to change the end one. So I'm going to click that. And then try and find, because it's going da da da. And I want this one to go back up. So maybe we'll go up two, see if that works. Yeah, I quite like that. So now, although this isn't necessarily the first thing you'd think of, because that's a little out there, but I quite like it. So 
So I quite like that. So it's not the most amazing thing I've ever heard, but it will do for the moment. Now, the problem we have is we can hear a click. Okay, so you can clearly hear that. And that is where we've we've edited this. And I'm going to zoom in on this and we'll probably see why. Yeah. So what's happening is I hear it on the right hand side, particularly because we've got this momentary change. And although this is showing that this is at the same level, etc. I think probably because we changed the pitch of it and we've chopped it about a bit, there's a little bit of a click happening there. So the way I've always done this is I found it much easier to do is although it's, it's a bit of a pain, it's easier to make sure it works, is to turn grid off. So again, don't worry about this if this isn't happening to you. This is only if you've got a click. I've turned the grid off and that means I can move this just a little bit. So I'm just going to drag that over just a little bit. And then I'm going to highlight both of them like that. So you've got them both highlighted and then press X on the keyboard and you'll see it's doing a little fade in and a fade out, which we're going to look at in a minute. But that should... That fixes that. So whenever you get a click, like there. So again, all I'm going to do is zoom in. I've made sure that snap is turned off. I'm going to click. I always click the second one just because I'm like that. I don't know why. Just overlap it just a tiny bit. Highlight both of them and hit X on the keyboard. And again, that should. Sometimes you need to tweak it, but that's 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 okay because we're going to have a bass drum there you could make it longer if you wanted to and part of it is just you hear that that's how that sounds anyway there's a little bit of one in there but i'm not going to worry too much but with a bit of playing around with crossfades so you just overlap them and then hit x you can fix these but any slight roughness is going to be covered up by those electro drums <laughs> Now, you don't need to put these in the order that they're in. Once you've chopped them up, you can put them wherever you want. So if you decided you wanted to move these around, you can just pick them up, move them around, etc. But obviously, you'd want to make sure you've got a grid turned on. And also, if you've done any crossfading, that will make them a weird length. So make sure you do all your arrangement first. So you can do all of the things that you'd seen before. So you can mute different sections. So if you decided you didn't want that bar, you could just mute that and we'll hear. You can duplicate bits. So with Control D or Command D, you can do all of the things that you saw with the arrangement that you did previously, copy and paste everything, all of that works. So you can do all of that in exactly the same way. So here are the skills that you've learned for instrument, MIDI parts, etc., are going to work for audio as well. So that's the basis of making arrangements and making some simple edits. So changing the uh, transposition, so we can see here, changing the transposition of audio parts, etc., and doing a little bit of crossfading. Uh, I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you again soon.